Hello and welcome to Virgo Unfiltered. Most of you probably know me from my YouTube channel, Virgo Triad. For those of you that don't want to check it out, you can head on over to YouTube at YouTube slash Virgo Triad. Let me just start out by saying welcome to everyone. I'm so glad to have you here listening to this podcast, and I look forward to building this channel. I think it's very important in today's climate that we discuss certain things that the majority of people choose to stay away from, and one of those things are the extremist groups that tend to be taking over social media and the internet at large. That's something that I'm going to be discussing uh, a lot on this podcast. It's something that uh, the majority of people that talk about politics don't tend to touch on very much unless they're an extremist themselves. And I think that since we have a situation that it appears that we've gone from just about 10,000 people back in the 1970s and 80s to well over a million people now that are considering themselves to be part of the patriot movement um, and that great big umbrella term sovereign citizen, it's time to start paying closer attention. We have um, some problems going on online due to these groups and the financial scams that they're running. But then in addition to that, they're getting a lot of people into trouble. Uh, a lot of people have already seen those videos where you can uh, find people that are driving without driver's licenses and getting pulled over on a regular basis and giving cops a hard time claiming that they aren't required by law to have a driver's license and the Supreme Court ruled supposedly stating that they don't need a driver's license, they don't need insurance, and they don't need to register their vehicles. On some of these, you even see them getting arrested and their windows being busted out in order for the police officers to be able to apprehend them so that they can take them down to the station to find out who they are. Um, the, there are literally hundreds of thousands of these videos all over YouTube and other platforms too. And it's really sad when you stop and think about the fact that we have 21-year-olds, 16-year-olds, uh, 18-year-olds that just received their driving privileges and they're watching these videos. They're learning from these videos. And as a result, they're finding themselves in more and more legal jeopardy because of it. Now, if you do some research on the sovereign citizen movement, for example, which is really the largest umbrella term, and by the way, um, back in the early 70s when this became a situation where there were more than just a few of them, they named themselves that name. It's funny because you always know when you're talking to somebody who's been watching these types of videos or has been listening to AM talk radio of someone who um, subscribes to these ideologies because they always make the same exact claim. You can't be a sovereign and a citizen at the same time. And you know what? If you were to separate those two words, that would absolutely be true. They literally mean opposite things. However, the sovereign citizen group of the 70s and 80s named themselves that. So the argument doesn't really go anywhere when you stop and think of it, about it that way. However, we uh, know for certain when somebody brings that statement up that they have deeply embedded themselves into watching ideology videos and listening to um, a narrative that goes towards the sovereign citizen movement. It's defined as a sov the sovereign citizen movement is defined as a loose grouping of American and Commonwealth litigants, uh, commentators, tax protesters, and financial scheme promoters on Wikipedia. And if you do some additional research on it, you'll find that they are anti-government extremists who believe that even though they physically reside in the country, they are somehow separate or sovereign from the United States. They absolutely do not like any laws. They tend to cling to things like the um, Articles of Confederation, which of course were um, overruled by the Constitution, and they tend to cherry pick case law in order to try to prove things to individuals that um, 
are looking at the videos. It is a real stick it to the man kind of uh, situation when you're watching something that they have produced or any content that they have created. And the biggest thing that that uh, makes them stick out like a sore thumb is they are 100% anti-government. Now, there's a lot of groups that are underneath this umbrella. Let's just talk about a few. We have the Moorish. The Moorish claim to be a part of a group that um, was noble Drew Ali was a pro was their prophet. Uh, this person was someone who ended up getting over a hundred years in prison, uh, which of course <laughs> he passed away long before he got to serve all of that uh, due to fraud. But he started a somewhat called well. I'm going to loosely call it a religion. It's more like a cult. And these groupings uh, that are now out there calling themselves the Moors really are not Moors at all. They are really a part of this religious cult. Um, they tend to follow loosely uh, the, the writings and the statements of this uh, supposed prophet, Noble Ali. However, um, in reality, they are actually almost exactly the same in terms of what their ideology is as the anti-government extremists that you would call sovereign citizens. Um, they believe in pretty much the same exact thing with the exception of they are uh, slave deniers. They absolutely believe that they uh, are residing, if they are in the United States, in Morocco. Yes, you heard it right. They believe that Morocco is actually what the United States is. They believe that the United States is a corporation, which is exactly what the sovereign citizens and the patriot movement teach. 100% um, not accurate, and they actually can't show any proof for it. However, they do a lot of cherry picking, and as a result of that, they tend to show things that make people believe that they're telling them the truth. The more that they um, express themselves with regards to uh, these lies about you know, the United States being a corporation and making crazy claims about people's birth certificates, stating that the birth certificate is a slavery contract and the minute that your mother signed it, the, the uh, government tricked her into signing you away, so on and so forth, it immediately brings out a large amount of anger out of people. People tend to continue to listen and go down that rabbit hole and it brings out uh, such an extreme anger that they go further and further down the rabbit hole and pretty soon everything begins to look like a conspiracy to them. We're going to be discussing all of these things along with uh, Freeman on the Land, which is largely based in Canada. They are a group of individuals who are also under the Sovereign Citizen umbrella. They believe largely the same things as the Sovereign Citizens. They're a little bit different than the Moors in that I have never heard them actually claim that slavery net does not exist or never existed. Um, but they have a little bit of a different take on things. We have different groups like the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters, and they fit into this also. In addition to that, we have the Militias, which are much more violent and have a tendency to um, be a lot more loud and boisterous. But the worst part about these groups and what we have as a an absolute virus going on online is the fact that they spread a lot of financial scams and a lot of people follow through with those scams and end up finding themselves either in legal trouble or they find themselves um, being scammed and out of a great deal of money. We're going to be going into all of these things as the uh, hour continues. But before we do that, I want to mention that the FBI and the Homeland Security Departments have both categorized the sovereign citizen movement as a domestic terrorist group. And as a result, the majority of these people don't call themselves sovereign citizens. Hence the reason why you'll hear people clap back when I make a comment or when anybody makes a comment calling them sovereign citizens. They want as far away from that label now as possible, even though they were the ones who came up with the label to begin with many, many years ago. We've had a lot of people that have asked me the question of where did the financial scams actually begin with this group? And for the best that I can trace back, 
it started back with a group called Posse Comitatus and ended up with the biggest um, perpetuator of the redemption theory, which are the financial scam end of this, uh, with a man named Roger Elvick. And I'm going to go into that for just a moment so you know who Roger Elvick is and how all of this began. To best explain Roger, I want to read you this short uh, little uh, paragraph off of homehighway.net. And um, this is something that I think is going to best describe what Roger was all about. Roger Elvick learned about Treasury Direct Accounts, or what you might have heard of before as TDA, while he was in jail for, theft, uh, con for a theft conviction during the late 1990s. There are some cases that are involving him that are linked uh, to my YouTube channel if you'd like to go over there and just search for Roger Elvick. I've also got all of his tapes up for everybody to take a look at. If you'd like to see what he looked like when he was alive and what it was that he was teaching, I think you'll find it very familiar to what you might have run into on YouTube or Facebook recently. After his release, he developed the quote-unquote redemption process, or what they now call the redemption theory, which was simply a combination of several groundless ideas, uh, then popular, of course, names in capital letters, the UCC was brought into it, birth certificates. Supposedly in 1933, he claimed that the United States filed bankruptcy and etc. Simply stated, his contention was that TDAs had been created by the Social Security Act of 1935 and that every American had an account with at least $630,000 in it. To access the funds in these accounts, one only needed to uh, recapture their quote-unquote straw man. Using UCC procedures, and once this was done, that party could, of course, write a bunch of hot checks and make them payable by the United States Treasury. I'm sure you can see already how this could be a potential problem. Elvick explained this a contention to a gentleman by the name of Dave de Ramire and a man named Gene Keating, which some of you might have heard of. Um, and the maddening promotion of this argument started. Soon seminars were being conducted all over the country. Promoters of this argument represented to the innocents who attended their seminars that the factual and legal basis for this argument were all correct. Please remember that gurus use fraudulent statements to deceive the gullible, and most recently you might have heard, especially if you are a subscriber of the Virgo Triad channel, um, that uh, a gentleman by the name of Winston Shrout went to prison or was sentenced to prison for 10 years at 70 years old uh, for doing exactly this thing. Now, huh, interestingly enough, and we'll go into this in another um, episode, Winston Shroud has run. So he is on the lam at the moment. But he was sentenced and uh, convicted. And as a result, is uh, to serve at least 10 years, probably more now, when they locate him. Between 2000 and 2002, many people were recapturing their quote-unquote straw man and writing checks to buy cars, boats, and other expensive toys and items. But soon, the indictments were flying everywhere. The person who wrote this actual um, article on Roger Elvick conducted an informal survey where they concluded that at least 200 people implementing the program got into serious legal trouble by using it, mostly via indictments. The promoters had made money conducting their seminars and selling indictments to their customers. Um, when trouble loomed on the horizon, the seminars, of course, stopped. Even though the redemption process was a total utter failure for Roger, this did not deter him at all, and he never changed. In 2007, uh, the person who wrote this article received a call from a woman whose husband was in Phoenix, uh, the jail there in Phoenix, for stealing a car. She had sent uh, this party a letter and had typed that she had typed up for her husband, who was asking advice from Elvick regarding how to resolve his criminal charges. This woman was not a client, but this letter demonstrates that you can find, and I'm going to give you the website address, that Elvick always was nothing but a thief. 
who wore patriotic garb. And that is what we're dealing with again, folks. And we're dealing with it at a very, very high level. We're dealing with it from millions of people. And they have gotten very good at manipulating social networks, social uh, media, and the networks therein, so that people are falling into this rabbit hole without even realizing that this is part of not only a scam, but of the Patriot Movement and Sovereign Citizen Movement also. Now, where you can locate that letter and the information that I just gave to you is an address called home.highway, H-I-W-A-A-Y dot net. All right, so we're going to go into just a little bit more with, reg oh, one more thing about this. This person, Roger Elvick, he disappeared from the scene, but not before he taught the person I just spoke to you about, Winston Shrout. And, of course, Winston Shrout ended up in the exact same scenario. The only difference is Roger died in prison, and Winston is still on the run. There are lots of people that are perpetuating this ideology and that are spreading around these falsities everywhere online. A lot of them are using Facebook and YouTube, and... Some of these names may sound familiar to you. Everybody does it just a little bit differently, but the bottom line is that all of these people are con men. I'm going to name several of them right now for you, so that if you happen to run across these channels, you're at least aware before you start watching what it is that they're spewing at you. Let's start with the most notorious at the moment being Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent's channel is full of nothing but scams, and as a matter of fact, this is the third channel that he has had up in the last two years that I am personally aware of. Harvey Dent actually put out a video claiming that you could use the number on the back of your social security card and a Federal Reserve routing number, you know, one of those routing numbers they normally use for wiring cash from bank to bank. He claimed you could use one of those and all you had to do was get some checks printed up or go online to Amazon and start buying whatever the heck you wanted. He did this back in June or July of 2017 and for about six months thousands and thousands and thousands of people were getting charges reversed to their bank accounts ending up losing their vehicles to repossession. Some people lost their homes and two people went to prison. Those two people are Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and Randall Keith Bean. And unfortunately, it didn't end there, but I digress for a moment. Let me talk to you just for a moment about Heather Ann Tucci and Randall Keith Bean and how Harvey Dent plays into this. There's an article on Knox News, which is also a part of USA Today, that talks about a supervillain and how he brought down two sovereign citizens. If you just search under that, you'll find it right away. It's a knoxnews.com article, and it's not only funny, but entertaining, and it's factual. Now, after all of this happening and a lot of the heat going on to Harvey, he claims Heather Ann Tucci and Randall Keith Bean don't even exist. They're not real people. Even though there were people at the sentencing and people at the trial, even though it was in a federal court, since there's no video of it, he claims it was just a show put on by the government. See, that's how these scams work. When someone starts a scam, it's real easy for them to continue the scam because everything feeds into the conspiracy. So the fact that two people ended up getting in trouble because they followed the advice in Harvey's video didn't mean anything to Harvey. He could care less whether somebody really got in trouble or not, and they did. You can locate them in the Bureau of Prisons website. But that doesn't matter to Harvey. Harvey simply denies that they exist at all. And if you're far enough down the rabbit hole to believe in the original conspiracy, and you've been following Harvey, chances are you'll believe this one too. Harvey Dent has had three separate channels on YouTube alone, and he had a website. His website is no longer in existence, and two of his channels have been deleted by YouTube for, of course, violating community standards, running a scam. 
but that doesn't stop Harvey. He just keeps coming back with a different channel name and a different Gmail account and starts running the scam all over again. He always monetizes his videos and he does whatever he can to try to get as many viewers as possible over to see all of his conspiracies. And the main one being, of course, that you should use your secret account in order to buy whatever it is you choose. At one point, Harvey even actually went out and tried to write a promissory note in order to buy a brand new 370, uh, Nissan 370. Of course, it didn't work and the police got called and he was asked to leave under the, um, the statement that the police officers made was that you either leave or we arrest you, um, but it didn't matter. His point was that just plays into the conspiracy. Of course, the dealerships are big business and corporations and the bank is big business and therefore the Federal Reserve must be brought down. I think Harvey thinks he's a libertarian, but in reality, he's just a con man and he loves his conspiracies. But the most that he wants to do and the thing that he loves the most is that ad revenue money. Sadly, he's not alone. Well, as far as Heather is concerned, she got almost five years in prison, and Randall, of course, didn't make out as well. Randy had, was the one who actually ended up trying to pull over $10 million out of his so-called TDA account. He had provisional credit from USAA because he was previously a veteran and had been with the bank for a very long time for 10%. They were nice to him and thought he was being honest. He pulled out every dime he could of that money, and he bought a $500,000 RV. Screwing everybody involved and getting caught within hours of this happening, Randy was, of course, put in prison for almost 13 years. Both of them are serving time, and they'll serve up to 85% of that time because that's the way federal prison works. Harvey, of course, takes absolutely no responsibility for this whatsoever and simply continues to claim that these people do not exist. He brings their names up every once in a while so he can put them in a title or in the tags of his videos and hopes that he gets more views that way. It's really kind of a sick thing, but it's pretty much what they always do. Even for Roger, this was all about money. None of it was ever true, and Roger never actually believed in any of it. That's the difference between the people that follow these con artists and the con artists themselves. The people that follow them, they do believe it's true, and that's what makes this so sad. On my YouTube channel for the last two years I've been trying to catch these people before they actually got themselves into trouble, and for a large part it's worked. But there are those that once they go down too many rabbit holes they can't seem to find their way out. It makes me really sad, but unfortunately it will take a really, really big wake-up call for most of these people to understand. And the saddest part about these conspiracies is, it started out anti-government, and once you get in trouble, it's even more anti-government. So, we run the risk of these people that are too far down the rabbit hole, friends and family that tend to watch YouTube videos or Facebook videos, falling into this and not being able to find their way out and sadly getting in trouble and that digging them even deeper into another rabbit hole. So where is Harvey at now? Harvey has another YouTube channel. He won't have it for long. My gut tells me that he'll probably end up wearing this into the ground very shortly too. He doesn't seem to be able to make it much past 20,000 followers before he completely loses his mind and starts attacking someone else or myself um, and ends up violating community standards through bullying and then YouTube will take another channel down. Moving on to the next person, let's talk about Eon. Eon has two channels. He has channel number one, Eon one, and channel number two, Eon two. Imaginative, I know. Anyway, Eon is big into paperwork, but what Eon doesn't tell everybody is, Eon is big into fraud, and Eon has a serious record. I'm not going to out anybody with using their actual names on this station as of yet. I may at some point. But this person has a record a mile long. 
He is a sex offender, and in addition to that, he is what they call, I believe, a vexatious litigator. That means, and I might have said that wrong, I'm not good at pronunciation, I'll tell you that right now. Of course, I'm not good at pronunciation, so let's start a radio show, right? Anyhow, Eon is someone who likes to file a lot of paperwork in court. And that paperwork is generally nonsense. This is something else that is a big deal for the sovereign citizen and patriot movements. They like to push the, the legal limits. They like to push, push the edge of the envelope when it comes to anything government. So that means the courts, the cops, and of course the IRS. Eon is particularly into lawsuits. He likes to file false liens against people. What that means is, for example, when you go and you buy a car, if you get a loan on that car, the bank has you sign a promissory note and they file what's called a UCC financial statement. That puts a lien on the car to where if you default on that car, they have the right to come and repossess it and turn around and sell it at auction to recoup some of their money. Well, you can file a UCC-1 as a citizen, and Eon likes to teach people how to do that. Filing a UCC-1 against somebody fraudulently is a big-time felony in most states. In some states, it's just a misdemeanor, but it's against the law everywhere. And one of the things that he liked to do was file these things against judges, against prosecutors, and against police officers. And it's a felony in damn near every state if you're filing it against an officer of the court. He has been put on a list that says he can't file any more lawsuits without getting an attorney first. And that is number one no-no to the people in the Patriot Movement that push this narrative. They claim, of course, that attorneys work for the man, attorneys work for the crown, or attorneys work for the <gasps> evil bar. The bar itself, in their opinion, is something that is not part of the United States. They believe that the bar, which does not, but they believe that bar stands for British accredited something, registry or something like that. It's so ridiculous that I haven't even kept it in my mind and I've been studying this stuff for years now. Regardless, that's not true. Bar is named the bar because the bar is where a judge sits at, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Also, the bar is a membership and it's up to you as an attorney whether you want to join or not. <laughs> They also claim that there's no law licenses, by the way, which is absolutely not true. Every single state has a licensing, and it's separate. The bar is a membership. Regardless, I'm going to go ahead and move on here. Eon is somebody that has done a lot of scamming his entire life, and he's also been to prison for many, many years. He's probably the person that you should trust the least in this movement, but funny enough, he had, I believe, the most subscribers out of everyone for a while. He was going hot and heavy in 2017 and 2018 on his YouTube channels, and then he had SATCOM. SATCOM was actually his website, and he may still have that for all I know. What I do know is that one of the technical advisors for SATCOM actually was a person who subscribed to my Virgo Triad YouTube channel and told me the entire story about how the FBI came in and took Eon's partner and lots of his equipment and ended up indicting a bunch of people. And this gentleman who worked just on the technical end of things, meaning just setting up his network and his computers, hightailed it out of there pretty damn fast. He knew that Eon was a con man. In addition, I've spoken to a couple of customers of Eon's. Eon at the time was charging over $1,200 for a package that he claimed would get you into your secret trust account. You know, that TDA account that has, well, we don't know, 630000 or $1 million or $5 million. Some people say $10 million. You just don't know. Everybody's got a different story. But this gentleman paid over $1,200 in order to get the paperwork. When he received the paperwork, he realized these were just IRS forms and a form that you can download free from the Secretary of State. 
He was very irritated and emailed Eon back and said, What is this crap? Guess what Eon did? He never emailed him back, of course. Unfortunately, this man was smart and decided to pay with PayPal. He was able to dispute it and get his money back and ended up getting Eon's PayPal account shut down. That is very similar to what happened to the next person that I'm going to talk about, and that is April Lejeune. April Lejeune is a political commentator. She calls herself a political commentator, I should say. She claims that she's a journalist, but in reality, April is just a conspiracy pusher. April has a YouTube channel with about 82,000 subscribers on it, but at the moment, April has absolutely no way of getting on YouTube. You see, she got a three-month suspension and nobody's really sure why, but we can guess that it's because of the hundreds of people that she defrauded out of $450 apiece for buying this BS package, largely the same as what Eon was doing, and doing seminars, streaming on YouTube, pretty much the same what Winston Shrout was doing. April's been on the run for a while. She's somebody that on the Virgo Triad channel I talk about a lot, because if there's any way, any possibility, that I can get any justice for the people that she has ripped off, and I do mean there are hundreds of them, I'm going to continue to follow her until they find her. April Lejeune is now on several platforms. She's on a platform called Josh, TV, Josh Who TV. She's on Facebook. She's on Twitter. And she's on something called Periscope, which is, I guess, a phone app. She asks for donations, and she gets them, too. She also has a Patreon account with quite a few people giving her about $300 a month, as it stands right now. She's constantly getting money in on a regular basis just for her regular broadcasts, which ordinarily I wouldn't have a problem with, although the majority of things she talks about I don't agree with because her politics are very much skewed. She isn't, she's very biased, let's put it that way. But regardless, I wouldn't have a problem with that. That's freedom of speech, right? Until she started with the scamming on these TDA packages. And in 2017, when she started this, she opened an office and she had uh, several employees in that office. All of those employees, two of her family members, and several of her customers that she defrauded, all ended up showing up over in my email inbox, wanting to know if they could do an interview online with me regarding what they had experienced with April or June. It got so bad at one point that one of the women that worked for her in her office ended up walking out the door in the middle of a work day after one of her customers called and said, did you know what you guys are doing is on the FBI site as fraud? Terrifying. Moving right along, we have Money Boy Films. Money Boy Films was somebody who started out as a rapper. He actually did some songs and he was pretty good at it too. But Money Boy Films got wrapped up into this conspiracy theory TDA account stuff and decided that he was going to go ahead and um, solicit a bunch more people across YouTube and other platforms that could assist him with doing things like selling t-shirts and making juice in their own kitchen, which was really disgusting, and in addition to that, pushing this narrative. The same thing, that your birth certificates make you a slave, that there is a trust account in your name that the government has stolen your identity for, that you're being traded on the stock market, and that if you just do these things and you capture your straw man, you too can have access to your millions. They ended up having a bunch of people send them money, and as a result, everybody that ended up sending them money got irritated because nothing was working. It's really sad when you stop and think about the thousands and thousands and hundreds and thousands, probably much more than that, that people have wasted on this conspiracy, on these so-called TDA accounts, throughout time. I mean, come on. Roger started really heavily pushing this stuff in the very early 1990s. Can you imagine the hundreds of thousands of dollars that just went in to the people back then? I mean, we're talking about people like Dave DeRamer, Gene Keating, Bruce Duche. Oh, let's not forget the lovely Anna Von Wrights. Seriously, folks, 
this group of bozos that I'm talking about right now, they are just the last of the ghetto rats that are picking up the pieces from the originals like Roger Elvick and his friends. It's no more true now than it was then. The difference is that now, the people that have access to the information that Roger was spewing, as bad as it is, they know how to get to people who have never heard about it before, and that is what this radio show is about. It's about making people aware of what's going on out there. I'm not going to go through every single YouTube channel that I know of that does this because it would take me 12 hours just to name off names. It is that serious. We are dealing with a group of individuals that largely work together but have no organization skills whatsoever. And they will get into a fight in a heartbeat. But the most dangerous of these people I do need to mention, and that is Druana. Johnston Wales. She's gone by Raven Moon. She's gone Dru by Druana Wales. She's gone by Druana Johnston. She's gone by Fawn Mercado. She's gone by all kinds of different names. But the truth is, is that this is a person who has sold probably millions of dollars worth of seminars, and she's still going. Nobody has stopped her, and she's not in the country anymore. Matter of fact, she resides most of the time in a country where she feels safe enough to continue to um, spread this nonsense. Now, the thing is, is that her original, which had over a million subscribers on it, YouTube channel, was removed for this scam. But she has started up a new one, and it's growing very rapidly over the last year. Druana is a different kind of bird. Druana seems to be able to draw men in because, well, she's fairly attractive. She gets on camera and she talks about her yacht, talks about going to Egypt, and talks about living in Mexico in a mansion. All the fancy cars that she gets and talks about all kinds of neat things. But the real truth is that Druana can't come back into the United States for any length of time because she has two felony warrants out for her arrest. Druana has been a con artist her whole life, and before she started with this latest con of the TDAs that she's been doing for about five years now, much longer than any of these other jokers, apparently she was a stripper. Not that that would matter, except, well, she kind of knows how to work herself where men in particular will pay attention. If you go on YouTube and you do a search for Druana Johnston fraud, you're going to find a lot of men who are very, very pissed off at Druana. Let's just put it that way, and I'll leave it at that. But the truth is, folks, that what Druana is serving up and dishing out is absolutely no different than what Winston Shrout went to prison for, and my guess would be that probably at least one of those warrants is one of the things that Winston got, too. But if they can't locate her and she's not within the country, then she won't pay until she flips up and makes a mistake or is in a country that extradites. So some of you now, after listening me, to me talk for the last several minutes about all these people, are like, okay, so we've either heard of these people or, already, or if we come across these people, we might, rem might remember their names. But what is the point exactly? Well, the point is this, that it really doesn't matter what their names are so much as that these are people that you might have heard of or might have run across before, that they all have one thing in common, and that is their straw man theory. I want to talk to you about the straw man theory because this is something that you're going to hear from literally all that are in these movements. The straw man theory, sometimes also called the straw man illusion, is a pseudo-legal theory prevalent in various movements such as the Sovereign Citizen, Tax Protester, Freeman on the Land, Moorish, American Nationals, and the Redemption Movement. The theory holds that an individual has two personas, one of flesh and blood and the other a separate legal personality, i.e., the straw man. The idea is that an individual's debts, liabilities, taxes, and legal responsibilities belong to the straw man rather than the physical individual, 
Isn't that convenient? The straw man theory is recognized in law as a scam. The FBI considers anyone promoting it likely a fraudster. The Internal Revenue Service considers it a frivolous argument and fines people that use the theory on their federal income tax returns, which of course is something that these movements push regularly. If you hear the term 1099 OID, they're talking about this movement. Straw man theory traces its origins to the ancient Roman legal practice of capitis dementio, decrease of head, a term used in Roman trials for the extinguishment of a person's formal legal capacity. Meant a person, this, this capitis diminutio, excuse me, uh, meant a person ceased to belong to a particular family without loss of liberty or citizenship. They viewed them as slaves or a prisoner of war. And of course, that's where they come up with your birth certificate makes you a straw man because it's in all capital letters and turns you into a corporation or rather a corporate slave. Another term you hear all of these people state. The theory holds that an individual has the two personas, one of them the physical, tangible human being and the other the legal person, often referred to as a legal fiction. That's another term. These are pop words or words that you're gonna hear come out of their mouths at some point in most of what their content is. They claim that when a baby is born in the US, a birth certificate is issued and the parents apply for a social security number. Sovereign citizens say that the government uses that birth certificate to set up a secret treasury account which it funds with an amount ranging from between $600,000 all the way up to $20 million, I've heard, depending on the particular sovereign belief system. Hence, every newborn's rights are split between those held by the flesh and body, flesh and blood, excuse me, baby, and the corporate shell account. All right, so those are some actual keywords for you to listen to. If you hear someone talking about a corporate fiction, if you hear someone talking about the straw man theory, if you hear someone talking about filing a UCC-1 to correct your status, they have a belief that is incorrect that they think that you need to take everything from public to private or from private to public. It's one of those things that... It doesn't make any logical sense, but yet they fit it into another conspiracy and feed it to you in a way that somehow makes people swallow it. These individuals will continue to push this narrative because it sparks the anger in people. And make no mistake, this movement is about politics. Now, there are going to be people that really want to try to attack me over this, but I'm just going to tell you the way that it is. I'm an independent. I don't subscribe to the right or the left, but most people do, even if it's moderately to one side or the other. I don't believe that an extremist on either side is good. I don't agree with the alt-right, I don't agree with the alt-left, and I find it totally humorous that they're so close together they could almost overlap and become one. But make no mistake, the people that are in the Patriot movement, the people that are in the Sovereign Citizen movement, the people that proclaim to believe in the straw man theory and largely push the scam of the redemption theory are self-proclaimed right-wingers. They are self-proclaimed alternative right. I actually have heard of people um, throwing an absolute conniption and making a claim that this is a leftist argument, but in reality, none of these people would claim for one second to be a liberal. None of these people would claim to be left for even a second. It didn't start on the left, it started on the right. Roger Elvick was a staunch Republican. I have to tell you that it doesn't make a difference one way or the other. This is not about politics in terms of what's right and what's wrong, or who's the worst extremist out of all of them. This is simply about what is reality. And reality is that this happens to be a right-wing, anti-government, extremist group, all of them put together under one umbrella, and they are all right-wing. Largely anti-Jew, 
largely anti, um, well, white supremacist and largely anti-woman. It is unfortunate, of course, that we see that even some of the Moors who are actually African Americans subscribe to this alt-right belief. They don't even realize that what came from Roger Elvick was actually a scam that originally he meant to attack the black race. Roger Elvick is from North Dakota, a largely Republican red state, and Roger Elvick was a white supremacist. He did not care for uh, black African Americans, and as a result of that, was looking for a way to try to get them imprisoned. In one of the tapes that are on the Virgo Triad channel on YouTube, you will be able to find where he talks about this. And he believed that they were so uneducated and ignorant, in his words, not mine, that they would fall for this scam. The truth is, the majority of them did not. His scam failed miserably. It actually went over bigger with the other farmers, which were also largely white supremacists. But, sadly, the redemption theory being something that a con artist could pick up and run with and pretty much had already been put out, laid out for them in terms of how it would work, these Moors picked it up and ran with it and have made it their own. And although there are some differences from the other movements, when it comes to talking about the straw man, talking about the uniform commercial code, and talking about um, your birth certificate having a bond, they subscribe to all of it and have added more to it. It's really sad to me. The whole thing is completely disgusting, but people have got to be aware of this. It is huge. It isn't little. Even if you haven't heard of it yet, all you have to do is search straw man or search UCC1 anywhere on YouTube or anywhere on Facebook and you're going to run across all of these shysters. If you are not aware, and for those of you that have children that are, I would say, between 13 and 21 that are still living with you, and even those that are not, Warning them would be a very good thing. You really don't want someone with an impressionable mindset still running across one of these charlatans because they will have your son or daughter believing that the government is an evil entity and has a shadow cabal and the United States is a corporation and they have a straw man with a trust account that they can crack into if they just open a checking account and put the right numbers on it. That's going to do it for today, folks. We'll be talking again very soon. I'll have a schedule up on uh, my channel here very shortly that will tell you when the next broadcast will be. And sometime late next week, we'll be going live. I thank you very much for listening, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Bye-bye.